Hi folks, we wanted to do a, a segment on docking as part of our series and um, I wanted to start off by, by, by being humble about this and saying that, that I'm not a delivery skipper like you know, John Kretschmer or John Neal or Captain AJ or any of those guys. I don't have thousands of sea miles under me, uh, but we do own our own boat and we keep it at a marina and, and so, you know, spring, summer and fall, we're, every time we sail, which is three to four times a week, uh, we have to take the boat out and bring it back and dock it. It's only a 22 foot sailboat. It's not a big 40 foot boat, uh, but the process is the same. And we, um, we wanted to do this segment largely because I've looked around the web and haven't found any uh, YouTube videos that really address what we're talking about here, which is um, the target audience being uh, uh, somebody who's going bear boating or has gone bear boating before. and and the, the typical bear boat crew is uh, usually one person or perhaps a couple that has some sailing experience enough to put together a resume that will satisfy the charter company and get them to sign off on giving you a fairly sizable boat that's worth, I don't know, you know $500,000 perhaps new. And uh, maybe another couple or two, uh, two couples that have almost no sailing experience and those folks are gonna be crew. Um, Typical bear boat charter, you know, starts off at the charter company, you get the boat, they, you get, you know, briefed on, on the systems and everything else. And then the, you know, one of the marina employees, or charter company employees, uh, takes the boat out and gets you kind of set up in the channel and, and then departs on a dinghy and you're on your own. And so you, you know, motor or sail across the Norman Island, you pick up a mooring ball, you have cocktails, maybe dinner, uh, you know, the, the party begins. And then the next day, it's the same process. You get up, you you know, you sail to someplace else, uh, uh, Norman Island, uh, or you're at Norman Island. Uh, you know, you go to Cooper Island or or someplace else. Um, and then, you know, you do this for the whole week, and then at the end of it all, you bring the boat back, and you you know, you radio in, and somebody comes and gets you and takes the boat back into the marina, and everything's good. Problem is that you've got a lot of people out there that have have sailed maybe their whole lives and they've got almost no docking experience whatsoever. Um, you will know this <laughs> as sailors that if you don't own a boat, you will never get to dock a boat. Uh, the only person that ever docks a boat is the owner. Um, and the, there's, there's a couple of options. You can go to a large enough sailing school that they've got some bigger boats and you can you know sign up to be taught how to dock. I'm sure they'll teach you if you ask them to. And really the only other option is when you're bear boating. Uh, when you're bear boating, you have, you know, you, you're, it's not a crude charter, you ha it's just you. And so if you wanna go into a marina, you know, you're welcome to do so. Um, and the process for doing that is not, um, not well understood by a lot of people who, who go out to, uh, to, to bear boat. So we're gonna talk a bit about that. I, I'm gonna do about you know, a few minutes on, on, on what we're gonna need to do and then show you a video of us bringing um, our chartered 37-foot um, uh, 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 Beneteau into Bitter End Yacht Club's quarter deck marina. And we have some pretty good video of that. But first, we wanted to talk about the basics of what you're gonna wanna do. Um, the, um, when you charter the boat, you're gonna wanna put together an itinerary of every day that you're um, that you're on your vacation and where you're going to be. Uh, it's a fun thing to do. Uh, charter a, a cruising guide, a book, a spiral bound book will come with your charter contract. Uh, and you'll get to see all the, all, the, all the islands and all the places to go. And there, there's great write ups on every location. And you're going to have to, and there's sample itineraries that you can, that you can use as a base um, uh, to, to, to get. And I, I use a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet, and I put together every night. And the reason that's important to do this is because you're going to want to make slip reservations. Um, if you come into Bitter End on uh, you know, race week or Swan Cup or something like that, there's not going to be any extra slips and there's probably not going to be any extra mooring balls either. Uh, so you want, to, you want to have a reservation. You, know, you pretty much just email them and say, you, you know, this is the night that we want to be there or the two nights that we want to be there. And uh, they'll confirm your reservation with an email. You print that out, put it in your packet of, of paperwork, and, and you're all good to go. Uh, it's important to have that, though, because when you radio in, you want to be able to say, we have a slip reservation. Um, the process is going to work like this. You're going to, 
you're going to arrive, and we'll, I'm going to use uh, bitter end as, a, as an example since that's what follows in the, in the video. Um, we arrived in the North Gorda Sound, um, a very protected, um, uh, a, you know, it's obviously a sound, a bay, and uh, we went through a process that we repeat every time. Um, so we're, the first thing that we're going to do is drop the sails, uh, get the boat tidied up. Uh, it's important that you know when you furl the head sole, you get a couple of turns of, of the jib sheets around the sail after it's after it's been furled. Um, snug up the, the jib sheets on the winches. Um, get you know just hand tight, no winch handles or anything like that. But just make sure it's all secure so that the wind can't get into the sail and start to open it up. You want it you want it held snugly. Um, you want the furling line to, you know they want the furling line clutch to be closed. All everything all the Ex excess furling lines, all the excess halyards coiled, um, you know, uh, set up in a, in a neat and seaman-like way. Uh, it's it's a, the the point that we're trying to make when we go into the marina is that we have that we're doing this in a professional and responsible way. And one of the things that other sailors in the marina are going to look for, um, you know, let's be honest, uh, bareboat skippers have a bad reputation uh, in the boating world because they're stupid. <laughs> so often. There's videos all over the web of people just doing unbelievably stupid things uh, with charter boats and so you want to fight that. You want to present um, to the rest of the marina that you know what's going on. There's a few things that you want to do. You want to you want to flake your mainsail when you bring it down. Um, you want to make sure it's it looks presentable. Um, again all the lines all tidied up. Uh, it, it, you, you're fine to put bathing suits and trunks and t-shirts on the lifelines when you're in a mooring field. When you're in a slip at a marina, it, it's considered to be pretty low brow to, to, to have all that stuff hanging off, all your dirty laundry out there on your boat. Uh, you want to know where neutral helm is on your boat. And that means that usually there's a almost always there's a piece of tape or something on the wheel that denotes the you know that the rudder is facing directly forward that it's that it's centered um, and you need to know where that is because if you lose track of what the angle of your rudder is when you're trying to dock a boat the the, the, the process the, what you do immediately is run the wheel to to uh, top dead center and, and center the rudder and then make adjustments from there uh, it's very easy with everything that's going on to lose track and you, you're kind of like, um, oh, what, wow, where, where am I? You know, what's going on? And when you add prop walk um, to the equation, if you've got a kind of a traditional um, propped uh, shaft boat, uh, you, you know, you, you may be having some prop walk. And prop walk occurs when um, the, the prop propeller blades at the bottom um, create torque against the water and, and start to rotate the, the stern of the boat, usually to port, and um, you have to uh, you have to be prepared for that. The newer boats, a lot of them are coming with a with, with a system called sail drive. You know, a sail drive boat has basically an out drive, like an outboard type of out drive coming out the bottom of the boat, just behind the keel. Uh, the benefit of this is the propeller is moved very forward, right up against the back of the keel, and um, and although the, the although the torque is still there, it's uh, it, it, it's very it's m more centered toward the um, toward the center of effort of the boat, and and it, it doesn't want to rotate the boat as much. Um, so it, whatever whatever sideways motion is being created by the propping either in forward or reverse, is uh, counteracted by the keel, which is right there. Um, a, a traditional shaft drive. Uh, propulsion system is going to have the, the, the propeller much further aft, really right in front of the rudder, and, and it's, it's, um, it's far enough aft that that, that that torque is going to want to twist the boat in the water. Um, usually, initially when you put it into reverse, you'll feel it as the boat gains steerage and starts moving, um, the, the, you know, the, it, 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 that goes away, but of course by that time you may not be lined up with your slip anymore. So you may want to do some some research and look on the web about about prop walk and, and understand it better. I don't really want to go into it too much here, but you have to be prepared for that when you're when you're backing into a slip. Almost all the almost all docking, in, at least in the Caribbean, uh, most of the boats go into the slips um, aft end first. 
um, the back end to the slip. Um, and there's some benefits to doing that. Uh, you get the hard work out of the way on the front end. Um, more importantly, you've got a, you know, it's really nice to have your cockpit right there on the, on the dock. You can, talk, you can talk to people as they walk down the dock. There's a lot of socializing that goes on uh, between the dock and the cockpit and people sit out on the dock and talk to people in the cockpit um, at night um, doing cocktails and whatever. I should also add that one of the big benefits of, of, of getting a slip at one of the marinas is that you're front and center. You really are at, at a place like Bitter End or Scrub Island or Peter Island Resort. People are paying $1,000 a night or more for a hotel room. And here you've got the prime real estate in the whole marina. You're right there in the center of it all. Walk, you, know, you can see the restaurants, you can see the bars and, uh, and, and walk right over to them. And, and everybody's kind of envious. It's kind of like, oh, that'd be so cool if I could just, you know, bring my own boat right into the marina. And that's kind of what happens. That's that, that's the, probably one of the biggest benefits of, of of going into the slips is you 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 get you get the best of the resort, the pool, the restaurants, pretty much everything. And you you know you're just right there. And the cost of it is is is, is very reasonable. I mean, it's a hundred and I don't know, 150 bucks a night or something at the bitter end plus whatever electricity you use. And uh, it's, 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 it's a great deal. And so, you you know, this this is better than picking up morning balls, in my opinion. The, I mean, it's more expensive. You don't want to do it every night, but it's a great it's a great thing to do for a couple of nights or three or four nights uh, of your stay. Again, if you have the interest in doing it, it's a, it's a there is no question that you're gonna have, you know, butterflies in your stomach. Um, you are gonna be scared that something bad's gonna happen. And of course, the entire marina is watching you. If you've ever docked a boat, you know that every skipper, every crew member, and you're gonna have big boats around, big professionally crewed boats, you know, 180, 80 foot swans and shipmen, um, sailboats at the bitter end, you know, million plus dollar boats um, right there with professional crew, and they're gonna be watching your every move. And it, it's gonna, it, it really is stressful. I have, there's no getting around that part of it. The way I look at it is I say, you know, barring crew injury or, or any kind of damage to the boat, um, my pride will heal, heal and you just have to figure that, you know, if, as long as you're not going to feel bad about it in a couple of days, you know, you might embarrass yourself a bit. It's just the process of learning and you just have to go through it and grab the bull by the horns and just go and do it. Um, but if you follow the procedure that we're advocating here, uh, you can eliminate a lot of the variables in, in docking, and that's the key, is to get down to the core of it, uh, where you don't have drama occurring. Uh, they always say that plane crashes, things like that, uh, rarely occur because of one problem. It's when two or three problems happen at once. The plane runs out of gas, and all of a sudden, you don't have any electricity, and your, your navigation, avionics systems go down. Uh, your hydraulics stop working properly. You know, a bunch of things are confronting the pilot at, at one time. And so the, the more variables you can eliminate when it comes to docking, um, the, be the better off you're going to be. Uh, so you've already tidied up your boat. You've gotten ready. And, um, and you know where neutral helm is. Uh, the, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going you're gonna to hail the harbor master. Um, and in this case, you'd probably say something along the lines of um, bitter end, harbor master, bitter end, harbor master, this is SV Lustine. And then you just wait. Um, and the harbor master will come back and say, um, this is bitter end, harbor master, switch to channel 78, whatever, you know, some other channel, they're going to give you a number. Um, and you're going you're gonna to switch to that channel to converse. Uh, the, the rule is you don't do any conversation on channel 16. Channel 16 is a hailing frequency, and it's a it's an emergency channel. And so, if it's if, if you're not doing one of those two things, then you don't belong on channel 16. Um, once you've once you've switched to the other channel, you're going to say bitter end, harbor master SV Lustine, and they're going to say bitter end, go ahead. And you're going to say uh, we have a we have a slip reservation for tonight under the name of whatever, and uh, give them a second or two to look in their book and find out, you know what's, you know you know what the deal is. They're going to come back and say, uh, they probably already have it. Bitter End has a slip contract that has all the information about your boat in advance, but 
they'll probably ask you to describe your boat and you say, say we're a 37 foot mono hull, uh, we, draw, we draw six feet, and um, that's pretty much all they need to know. And uh, they're gonna come back and say, uh, yep, you know, Lestine, we have you at uh, slip B7. Uh, we're gonna be on the north side of the T-Dock quarter deck. As you come in, you'll see us. We'll have somebody on the dock uh, to help you tie up the boat, guide you in. Um, we would, uh, you know, you, you'll be coming in, um, you know, aft end. You'll be backing into the slip. We, we want you to have your fenders deployed on your starboard side. And that's, that's the information you're gonna to need to know. Um, the bitter end people told us, make sure that our fenders were low, like almost to the water because their dock was low. Um, they'll give you some information about stuff like that, um, things that you'll need to know. Now that you know that you've got a slip, <laughs> there's a bunch of other things you're gonna to need to do. Uh, up to this point, if they told, told you, oh, I'm sorry, all of our slips are taken, we're really sorry, uh, then you'd be probably going to try to find a mooring ball or even an anchorage. But now that you know you've got, that everything's all good in the marina, you've got to prepare to actually go into the marina and there are some things that are very important that you do. First thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna move your dinghy uh, to a bow cleat. Um, you, you don't wanna be backing into a slip with a dinghy stuck back behind you. Um, it's gonna get in the way, it's gonna get caught on a piling, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna get caught on the side of the dock as you're backing in. No, you don't do it that, that way. You get, your dock, you get your dinghy painter, you walk it around to the, to the bow cleat. Uh, since you know that you're deploying your fenders on the starboard side, that means you're also gonna be deploying your, your, your docking lines on the starboard side, and therefore you wanna tie your dinghy up to the port bow cleat. Um, you, you're gonna have a lot of lines on the cleats uh, on the dock side, and you don't want the dinghy painter getting in the way. It just makes sense to do it that way. Uh, you don't want, you, you want the, the dinghy to be tied fairly tight to the, you know, you, you want the, the painter to be relatively short, but you don't wanna be so short that it's lifting the bow of the dinghy up out of the water when you're, when you're moving forward. And you're gonna be moving very slow. You're, you're still out in the middle of the sound here. You haven't even entered the channel to, to bitter end yet. You're still preparing. You, you know, that's why I like to hail the the harbor master about 10 to 15 minutes in advance of actually going into the marina because there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you wanna do and you don't wanna be trying to do this stuff while you're maneuvering the boat. You wanna get all of this stuff taken care of. You wanna tidy up your boat, you wanna, you wanna get the, 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 the slip arrangements taken care of, you wanna get your fenders deployed, you wanna get your bow line set, you wanna do all this stuff before you even start to go into the marina. Uh, it's, it, it, it makes life so much easier when everybody's just kind of standing around alert without being distracted by other stuff. You're, you're going to have a, a small crew meeting to, to explain to the crew what their responsibilities are because you're going to have to have somebody on the bow line for sure. Uh, if you're double handing like Wendy and I were, um, the helmsman's going to have to handle the aft line. It's, it's right there next to the wheel, no big deal. Uh, but um, it's nice if you have people assigned to the various bow line, to the various docking lines. Uh, you've got your you've got your dinghy taken care of now. Um, now it's time for the for the for the mooring lines. Um, I'm assuming that your mooring lines are just lines with ends, instead, but a lot of the a lot of the uh, docking lines and mooring lines have. Uh, a loop at one end that's braided back in. You can put that on your bow cleat if you wish. Um, I always like the idea of being able to uncleat a, a, a line in an emergency. It's a, one of the, I mean, if you don't understand a cleat hitch, um, you, you, should, you should definitely Google that, and watch videos on the, on, about, I'd say 50 to 60% of the cleat hitches I see are done improperly. And, the, um, and the, the, guy, the island guys that work at marinas and docks and stuff like that, they, they almost take pride in doing it badly. I mean, they literally just wrap a bunch of turns around a, a cleat and walk away from it. Um, that is not a professional way to do it. Uh, they do it because they're locals and they just kind of are thumbing their nose at the establishment. Uh, but but if, you're, if, you're, if you've got your own boat or somebody else's boat, a valuable um, asset and piece of property, uh, you want to do this the right way. And so a cleat hitch, the beauty of a cleat hitch is that 
it's it's um, it can be it can be wrapped very quickly and it can be unwrapped very quickly. You don't want to have you know six you know crossovers on top of the on top of the on top of the cleat. It's just it's unnecessary and it just gets in the way if you have to if you have to untie all that in a hurry. Um, so um, make your own choice about whether you use the end loop on a bow line or not. Um, I, I guess it's the easy thing to do to put it on the on the cleat uh, because the rest of the bow the bow line. I'm going to talk mostly about the bow lines, but there's going to be three lines that you want to have prepared and ready to go. You want to have a midship cleat ready. You want to have a bow cleat ready, and you want to have a stern cleat ready. And each of those three is going to have their own line, and um, hopefully somebody to handle that line, uh, someone assigned to to be the midship cleat line, the, the bow line, and then hopefully a, a third person for the for the aft line. Uh, you want to hand these lines to the people on the dock. It's really not preferable to throw them, um, but if if the wind starts blowing you off the dock and you're finding yourself moving away and, and it's kind of an emergency then throw the line and um, so you want to be ready to go to do that it's the, the, probably the, the biggest mistake people make is they set up their their bow line for example and they just lay the line on the deck well what you really want to do is pull that line out around the lifelines over the top of the lifelines and back down to the deck and then coil it or organize it in some way that it's not going to be a giant tangle when you're ready to, to, to go if you have to throw a line to to somebody on the on the dock, it's, it's super important that you coil the line on your hand on the outside like a spring, because when you throw it, you want it to actually open like a spring. And uh, you, if you're gonna throw the line, you better have six to eight feet of line, free line between your hand and the cleat, or you're gonna get halfway through the motion and it's gonna jerk and stop. And, and then, the the line's just going to kind of fly, you know, fly halfway to the guy and fall in the water. And th this is what you do not want. You do not want lines in the water. You can't, ha especially the stern line, you just can't have that, that line go in the water. It's going to get sucked right into the prop immediately. Uh, so you, you, you the, the, the ideal situation is you back into the slip and it's, it's very controlled. You bring the boat in very slowly and literally hand the, the, the lines off to whoever's on the dock. Um, if, uh, if there was nobody on the dock, the, the, the midship person would step in a controlled fashion, um, holding onto the shrouds, um, would step gently across onto the dock, not lunging or jumping or any of that, just stepping right off, and then they would, they would pull the boat in. You do not want to cleat off any mooring or docking lines before the boat has stopped moving. I mean, the, the thing that drives me crazy is when you're coming into a slip and you're still moving and someone cleats off a stern line and all of a sudden the boat just comes to an absolute stop and the, and the bow starts pivoting off the dock. And, and, and that is totally unnecessary. You, you don't want that to happen. You want, you want, to, you want to pull the boat in with the, with the lines, um, get it in against the fenders, have the motion of the boat stop completely, and once that's done, Cleat off the, cleat off the lines, and then you can start worrying about spring lines and things like that afterward. Um. So, so you've got your lines set to a cleat. You get, you run the bitter end out um, around the lifelines, back down to the deck. Your your crew members that are there are going to be standing. Um, you know, the bow person's probably going to be holding onto the, onto the uh, forestay um, for balance, and it, you're just going to do this in a very slow way. Um, only when everybody is set and ready to go with your, your fenders in place, your bow line's ready, all of this, do you actually start to head into the marina. And occasionally you'll get a call saying, where are you guys? And, uh, you know, you just, you just have to do this in the proper way. Um, one of my biggest frustrations when I'm down in the islands is... And I find this almost every time with marina employees, is that they will cast you off um, before you even get your engine started. Um, they will do the most ridiculous things, and I hate it. I wish that you just almost, you can't very well go to them and say, could you please do this in, in this particular way? They just don't want to hear it. Um, so you have to be kind of ready for this, but uh, the, 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 the 
the people on the dock are going to be, you know, telling you to do this and telling you to do that. If you know what you're doing and you have a plan, I try to tune those guys out um, because unless they're telling me something, that, unless they're yelling at me about something, I, I try. I, I really have found that they get in the way more than they help. Um, they're making motions about turning the wheel and stuff like that, and it's backwards to me, to, you know, to the to the skipper who's looking at it. It does They're 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 doing it from as if they were, um, as if they were at the helm, and it, it's you end up getting confused about what it is that you're supposed to do. And uh, so uh, go with your gut instinct and just and just get, bring the boat in. Um, you'll notice in the video as I come in, we we we, we basically come down the fairway to our slip. We we make the turn out. Um, and I start to back in, and, uh, and, 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 it, and it works you know, pretty well. We get a little prop walk on the first try. I decide that I don't like the alignment of the boat, and I go back out a little further um, so that I've got a little bit more room to get the boat moving, and then um, come back in, and everything works fine. Um, so we'll, uh, with, with, with all of that, let's, uh, let's get to the video.